Peace, peace. It's time to this one. The title of this video is going to be Is Alex Helly Lied About Roots? And it was plagiarized. And I'm just going to start off with playing this little clip by Dick Gregory. Um, and it's on We All B TV. Um, and you can find it under Alex Helly Plagiarized Roots. I'm going to play this little clip and I'll be back with a little brief. I'm going to um, basically show you the case and show you everything that shows you that Alex Helly plagiarized roots okay i mean and how how are it when they uh, the skip gates huh you talking about uh, skip. skip gates yeah wait, wait, now go back to the night he came back that happened the night he came back from china you're aware of that right mm -hmm. now a neighbor across the street a Negro carrying boxes into his house. Now, when do, well, at what point do you suspect somebody's robbing, taking stuff in the house and not bringing stuff out? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what that was about? What was about? He brought 40 some boxes back with him. That was the CIA and the FBI setting up a situation where they could get him out the house so they could go in and check them boxes. Peace, peace. Yeah, I just want to touch on real quick that uh, the earlier clip that I showed you with Dick Gregory and how Dick Gregory basically was like, you know, remember, um, Dick Gregory is also in the boule, so he got to keep the he got to keep the shit going that we from Africa, too. OK, um, but as far as um, Skip Gates, right, I want to just explain that. Right. What you guys don't know when he got locked up. When he got locked up, and um, I guess that was Boston or whatever the fuck he lived at, or whatever, he was just coming back from doing like a um, a tour, right? And he went to Scotland, and he found out that he related to um, Charles of the Nine. I believe it's Charles of the Nine. That's what I believe it is, right? And they found out that Charles of the Nine. He he found out that he had ancestors that was in Scotland. And they was Charles and the Nine, right? Now, check this out. What a lot of people don't know is that the Moors was in fucking Scotland. The Moors was in Scotland. St. Patrick's, when he said expel the snakes, he talking about the Moors. He was talking about Moors. So his ancestors go back to the Moors that was living in Scotland. And they found, like, and they wanted to see what he brought back when he came back. So then they, they basically was taking boxes and shit out of his house. How the fuck they go in his house and take boxes out there accusing him of breaking in? If they're accusing him of breaking in, why they go in his house taking boxes out? Okay, and this is what they said because he related to Charles of the Nine. Look, you look it up. Look up Charles of the Nine and you'll see um, exactly what I'm talking about. And they got a video of him. They got a video of him while he over in Scotland. And after he did that video is when he came back to the States. All right, so you guys check that out. All right, I'm going to go into the video, okay? Peace. Peace, peace. Time for this one. And I um, just wanted to just get back to this the, um, video I was um, putting up about Alex Helley um, and how he plagiarized um, the book 
Roots. He actually plagiarized it from an author named Harold Corrinland. This guy right here. <clears throat> Harold Corrinland. Um, it says he was an American novelist, um, anthropologist, and say an expert in study of Haitian life. The author of 35 books and plays and numerous scholastically articles. Carlander specialized in the studies of African, Caribbean, Afro-American, um, and Native American culture. He said he took a special interest in oral literature, cult, and African-American cultural connection with Africa. All right, so let's see what this guy did. So, all right, so I'm going to just go over a little bit. All right, so here you go right here roots and the plagiarism now listen i do not use wikipedia as a source because i know wikipedia anybody can put anything on wikipedia but i got multiple different um sources up here so just bear with me i'm just going to read the, the one from wikipedia first let say um let me get to the point all right it's a coralander wrote several novels his most famous being The Africans, published in 1967. The novel was a story of a slave uh, of a slave's capture in Africa, his experience aboard a slave ship, and his struggles to retain his native culture in a hostile new world. In 1978, Coralander filed suit in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, charging that charging that Alex Haley, the author of Roots, has copied 881 passages from his novel. Corinland, the pretrial memorandum in the copyright infringement lawsuit claim, defendant Haley had access to the substantially copied from the Africans. Without the African, Roots would have been a very different and less successful novel. And indeed, it is doubt, doubtful that Mr. Helly could have written Roots without the Africans. Mr. Helly copied languages, I mean, language, your language, thoughts, attitudes, incidents, situations, plots, and characters. The lawsuit did not allege that Alex Helly plot was copied as entirely as the two novels differ in many plots. Coraline, the novel depicts a certain, a successful revolt on a slave ship and a sh shipwreck in the French colony of Santa Dominga or Domingue, whatever the hell. It's a fugitive life as a captured, as a escape, as a, I'm sorry, as an escaped slave recaptured by French troops and then transported to New Orleans in 1802. Helly's novel begin begins before the American Revolution depicts um, disease striking down the slaves before they could revolt and shows the ship arriving successfully in the British colonies of Mar Maryland, Maryland. The copy, the copying in Roots was in form of specific ideas, passages, for example, simi I mean, um, strikingly simile language is used to describe the infestation of lice on the slave ship. All right, so let's see, let's see. All right, so this is Coraline, the version of what he wrote, and this is Root's version. So let's read, they say, to the damp, sick foulness in the belly of the ship, they came to be added another torture, lice. They crawled on the face and drank at the corner of the eyes. They say, if the fingers caught the predators, it would be killed between the fingernails. But the lice, and then this is Helly version. They say, but the lights preferred to bite him on the face, and they would suck at the liquid in the corner of the conta eyes, or the snot draining from the nostrils. They say he would swarm his body with his fingers, darting and pinching and crushing any lice that he might trap between his fingernails. All right, so you could tell that's plagiarized. I mean, <laughs> You can tell that's played. Where did he get it from? And I'm going to go a little further with this. I'm going to read to you the trial and what Alex Helly said when he was cross-examined. So, all right. So, this is this is Wikipedia. Um, I got 
this article right here this is from the daily news it say amazingly roots return after 40 years dredging up alex helly plagiarized scandal all right and i'm gonna get on this in a minute I'm, but i'm gonna read the trial first i'm gonna show you another one i got this is something where is this article from um or this is from martin luther king dot org they say the celebrated root the, the celebrated roots of a lie okay so it says on january 16 2002 it said on friday nbc will be it will be will air a special commentary that 20 i mean the 25 the 25th anniversary of the Landmarks uh, miniseries based on Alex Haley book Roots. Ironic, ironically, the um, the original series aired on ABC, but official but officials at that network took a pass on broadcast and the, tri the tribute. They say what truly amazing, however, is that Roots is receiving a reverential. A re, re, a re tri, tribute at all for what for for while I mean for a while the miniseries was remarkable and important piece of television they say the book on which it was based has now been widely exposed as a historical hoax okay so you motherfuckers that be coming on here that be wanting be wanting um fucking sources and you be wanting all this other um information or whatever there you have it right there and i'm not even done yet but i'm just telling you this is martinlutherking.org and i'm quite sure these brothers right here they did the, the research and the sources and i'll show you the sources at the bottom but i'm not even going to fully read this whole article i'm gonna go right into the trap okay so it's saying i read that part um all right, let me go right into the trial. Let me read to you some things from the trial. All right, so just bear with me. Let me find the part that I was looking for. All right, so look, let me just show y'all. Look, Alex Haley Roots, it say the trial, okay? It says, um, All right, so I'm going to read this part right here, and then I'm going to go right into what Alex Haley said. Okay, it said, at the trial date approach, Coralander received a stack of what described nasty letters, which he did not disclose to his family. It said, on the other hand, a note of encouragement came from the social active civil rights organizer, Banyard Russell. Now, Banyard Russell is a motherfucking homosexual that was with uh, Martin Luther King, and he the one who re who revised his whole speech because Martin Luther King was going to do the speech about giving us reparations, but he changed the whole he changed the whole format of what Martin Luther King was going to do. Now that was his whole purpose to go into Washington is to get us our fucking reparations. But Bayard Russell, you know, he was a fucking agent, so I said he wrote, "If you think." You have a social legal case against Alex Haley. You should proceed regardless of those who assert that a case will damage black pride. Excuse me. They say, as there was good news from the publisher, Banton was planning to re release The Africans. It has been out of print for several years. They said, there was talks of running magazine ads, touring it as. The book that came before the roots experience okay all right so let me see let me just find this so just bear with me all right just bear with me i'm here with you guys all right and let me put another disclaimer out there right now we can also look at it from this point of view right maybe they maybe alex helly did write it right and that white people didn't want the um didn't want it to come out or whatever but they already let it to come out they already let him write the story. And then what a lot of people don't know is Alex Haley was a government agent. Alex Haley talked Malcolm X into writing his biography, his autobiography at the age of 33, I think. He's a 33, 34, 35 or whatever. And who writes an autobiography at such a young age, okay? And also, like I said, 
they just made a remake of this, right? Now, if I'm showing you evidence that this was plagiarized, then why the fuck would they even make let you make a remake of it? If they t if he telling you that more than 80 pages of the book was plagiarized, then the book should be canceled. This the book should be canceled. But they saying that because it's such a remarkable um like it's something historical as far as history that the book should remain and be allowed to be on the um stands or whatever though but me myself i take the stands that none of this shit happened the people who that they was bringing they was bringing people from the caribbeans because they the europeans was in the caribbeans and they was taking blacks from the caribbean see if you don't know that it was already blacks in the caribbean then you would think that it was indians there but the people was there you think this vast large piece of fucking land only had red indians on it that just got here in the 1600s you understand this whole piece of land they want you to believe what nobody here and the people who was here they killed all of them off and and that was it and then they went and went went to africa and bought some other thing now this book the africans let, let me add this the book the africans is only about 250 african slaves okay he didn't make a continuation of the book he didn't make another novel he didn't bring he wrote about 250 african slaves it wasn't no continuation it wasn't no like i said no other parts of it the, this one particular book was about 250 african slaves and i'm going to note they did bring maybe 10,000 i'm gonna say either between 10,000 and maybe 40,000 African slaves, or if that, I don't even believe that, I don't believe that, I really do not believe that, alright, so, um, so let's go, I want to read the part when they cross-examine Alex Helen. so just bear with me, though. alright, here we go, right here, this it right here, they say two Colombian to Columbia Universe, University English professor Michael Wood and Robert W. Hannon, they say, has been hired to analyze roots and the Africans to de 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 determine <coughs> if any copying has took place. They reported strength, strength, strength in Coralander's argument. The similarities between the two books are, are not accidental, hand in rope. Without the material heli copy from the Africans, Roots would have been far different and, in my opinion, a less effective novel. I believe the material heli copy was crucial to the success that Roots has been achieved. It's a more telling that the seminal, it's a disseminate, the, the sim, seminate, judge wards expressed during the court the, the course of the trial even before reading the legal brief ward explained he has read he have read the african anvils unlike the expert who examined the books line by line side by side ward took an average reader approach reading one of the uh, reading one then reading the other he came to the same conclusion as the experts okay all right i'm gonna read a little bit more of this okay they say, after three days of testimony, it was time for Heli to take the stand. When did you first hear about the Africans? Coralander attorney asked Alex Heli. In the spring of 1977. So now, basically they saying this. Well, matter of fact, let me, I'm going to read it and then I'll explain it from that part. In connection with the article, which appeared in, in, in the New York Times, um, the author was so soft-spoken that the court typist asked him if he could speak up louder. Have you read the book, The Africans, prior to the publication of Roots? I have not. It say, um, Herb Boyd, who previously had come to Heli Defense, fi finds his response implausible. Okay. To have missed either Jubilee... I think Jubilee was written by um, W.B. Du Bois and the Africans, which we know was written by Harold Cornlander. They say in Boyd's view was almost akin to someone doing a book on historical um, of the black church in America and knowing nothing of African-American scholar, writer, and activist W.B. Du Bois. They say Judge Ward 
I also refuse to believe how hell he could have spent more than a decade, more than a decade is 10 years, more than a decade researching, researching a book about Africans and African Americans without coming across the book, The Africans. The book has been released in the middle of Roots research and has been highly appraised by those in discipline after, no, in discipline. After hearing the defendant's explanation, the unorthodox research methodology during the trial. So remember, you motherfuckers who like the I'm and Rye squad, you know, they always talk about methodologies. So they basically saying that he took an un, unorthodox, unorthodox mean an un, a, a, like it wasn't, it wasn't planned properly or whatever. So it's basically saying his methodology research was crappy for him to publish this book that was dealing with history. Okay. So it's say during the trial, West, West, I mean, Ward um, expressed his view to the courts, Mr. Helly, and I see it got hold of the book or substantial portions of it made a lot. I uh, made a lot of notes and cards and pieces of paper, shoved them in a different folder or subject matter, and then took bits and pieces and worked them in plug them into different subjects that he that he was addressing in his much longer in his much longer book okay so he's basically saying that he took certain pieces he wrote he wrote he wrote it or maybe he just wrote it freestyled it off of some of the research he got and some of the research he took from Harold Corlander but my thing is this though like the whole roots is how we even think about that we was brought here on a slave ship and this motherfucker plagiarized the fucking book he didn't have no research he got this book from someone who wrote about 250 african slaves and they want you to believe that in the 1800s there was more than there was more than i want to say at least three million blacks here you understand it was more than three million blacks here when you look at the censor on slavery you got to understand that shit is unconfusing because a lot of them slaves was white they don't pretty much specify they put slaves you understand and and from my research like it's pretty much it's unclear with history because they rewrote in history after the 1900s so the civil war was basically they did the civil war because it was more fucking white slaves in this country than it was black people and the white when the white slaves joined the other white people they made a pact together to overturn us and this is what happened after the civil war so what i'm trying to tell you is that it was only maybe like I said, maybe 20,000 um, Africans boy here. And I'm thinking that these people was the Moors that was captured in Europe. Okay, they captured Moors in Europe. The ones that they didn't kill, they converted into Maurice schools. And, and the other ones, they captured them and made them slaves and put them in chains. Okay, and this is where you get because they got documents. They have a document that basically classified Moors, Negro, Moors, Negroes that was in North America and Indians all together as one people. They classify all these people as blacks or Negroes or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? So at that same time, you also, like I said, you also have a lot of free black people at that same time. But a lot of the black people that they bought here, they also bought black people here from the Caribbeans because it was blacks all throughout the fucking Americas. And when they came here, they was befriending people, capturing people, kidnapping people. That's how they was doing. They didn't have to kidnap a whole village of motherfucker. They only need to bring forth. That's why when you see when you see um when you see the slave posters and you see like most of the slave auction, it only say like nine or ten slaves or nine or ten supposedly black slaves. What happened to two hundred and fifty? Where are these people went? Because you never see no large amount. You never see a large, uh, um, like when you look at a slave poster, it don't never say 300. It don't never say 250. It don't never say 200. It don't never say 100. The most it might say is 8 or 9 or 10. That's all it might say on a slave poster. And anybody find one that said, that shows different, please post the link on my um on the comments, okay? So basically, it's showing you that he plagiarized, okay? And let me see. I'm going to go down a little bit more. I'm going to find out. All right, so it's a, all right, it's a, before the conclusion of the trial, Halley had tried to settle out of court with Coralander, 
you know, it say Heli Heli charged several out of court with Corinne Lander for two hundred and fifty thousand, the equivalent today of one million. It say thought it was substantial sum for Corin Lander. It say who was never able to rely on his own royalties to earn a living. It say he had rejected the offer. Nearly a third of roots came from I mean nearly a third of roots came from his book. He argued. So he's saying that out of the whole book, a third of it, a third of it was was Corlander's work. So he's saying that Alex Helly never wrote the book or whatever. And he just added stuff that he got from he got probably from other sources as well as he probably just basically summarized some of the shit that he got from Corlander as well. Okay? So hold up, let me see. We was bear with me, fellas. Honestly, they say nearly one a third of roots came from his book. He argued without the Africans, roots would would not be roots. At this point, a verdict of guilty seemed inevitable. All right, so now let's go down. Let me scroll down right here, and we're gonna see how much he get. They say with an estimate net worth of seven point five million. Okay, that's how much Heli was worth at that time before he died. Seven point five million. They say Heli could afford to offer more. They say and Corland didn't know it. They say as the trial would wind wind down to the final days, Heli um conveyed with his attorneys who who were uh, uh, according to one reporter reluctant to settle. They say the day before the verdict, it's, it was to be rendered, Helly agreed to pay Corlander six hundred and fifty thousand. So if he didn't plagiarize the book, then why the fuck would he even offer him anything? See that's how you know suspicion of guilt. Because if I didn't steal nothing from nobody and I know I ain't still he he claimed he didn't even read the book. So if I know that I didn't even read your book or that I ain't even steal nothing from you, then why the fuck would I even offer you any money? You understand? Why would I even I don't know you I never took none of your work. I never read your book. I read your book later on after I produced the roots or whatever. So why would I even offer you any money? Okay. So he 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 gave Harold Corland six hundred fifty thousand dollars. All right. So I don't even need to go no further on this. But look, that's why when you put in the search for this guy Harold Corland to come up, you see Alex Haley. All these pictures of Alex Haley. Why would Alex Helly pop up when you pop when you put in Harold Corlander? Why would he pop up? You understand? Because they know, they know, they know he plagiarized it. You understand? He plagiarized the book, and you people think that you like you know what I'm saying y'all don't even know he plagiarized it. Then they even got memes. They got memes up that shows that he plagiarized it, and everybody know he plagiarized it. And like I said, let's say all right. They say Alex Helly wrote the book for black people to show them their history. Let, let's take it from that direction or whatever. He didn't because this book, the African, was only about 250 African, I mean, supposedly African slaves, okay? They remember at the time of Reconstruction, we never know, we don't know what they told them to revise or call us. You understand what I'm saying? Because all of the slave posters says Negro. So they're not calling none of the people in none of these slave posters Africans. Okay? they not. Now think about that. Think about that. And none of these slave posters, when you see the slave posters, they say the Gold Coast, which is California and um, fucking like the Caribbean. It don't say nothing about the slave. These slave posters that you guys see. And if you want to do, Google them. Do your research and find them or whatever. You'll find them if you look for the slave posters. You'll see. And if you see, like I said, they wearing, they wearing their, their fucking, uh, matter of fact, let me, let me see if I can pull it up. I spelled the shit wrong. Sorry about that. But look, we got images. Bam! Here we go. Now you tell me, right? You tell me where the fuck it says it says Africans. At. You don't see none African. Look, look, none of them you see Africans. Okay, none of them. None of them you see Africans. None of them. 
none of them. Okay, run away, valuable, valuable gang of young Negroes. Valuable gang of young Negroes, because that's what they was doing, kidnapping people. Now look, check this out. This this is the one I want to show you guys that motherfuckers don't even understand, right? Look at look at these two. Bam. Look at this one right here. It says a cargo of 94. It's a 94 prime healthy Negroes consisting of 39 men, 50 boys, 24 women, and 6 girls. Just arrived in Burganti, Dembray, whatever. It say as bad say from Sierra Leone. All right, this one says Sierra Leone. This one says Africa, but I don't even believe that because look how they dress. These motherfuckers is dressed just like them. Look, this one says just arrived from the wind word word rice rice croft or whatever. But look how they dress. They dress like the fucking Americans. They dress like this. Look how they dress. And, and by the way, just to show you, this is our notice Montanus. This is his book right here. America's early depiction or discovery of the new world. You know, I always show you guys this picture right here to show you that this says America on it. So you notice America. You see two white men. You see these two white guys? Okay, you see these two white guys? They're carrying a black lady. Whether you want to call that a fucking Indian, I don't care what you call it, okay? That's a black person to me because to me, the history that I know, a person that looked like this is not supposed to be over here. See, they, they keep switching up the way that the so-called people that we equate to being Indians look. So when you see dark Indians, they try to cover it up and say, oh, this is a dark Indian to let you know that you wasn't here. And then the ones that look like this, they try to say, oh, we mix with, we got Europeans in us. Or what? No, that's not true. You got Africans that look like this too on the West Coast. The, on, on, on the West Africans don't look like um, fuck, um, South Africans. They don't look nothing like South Africans. And then you got people in the Caribbean. You got certain people in the Caribbean who they look like they Negroes. You know they Negroes, but some of them are lighter and some of them are darker. And it ain't because... Of, you no, know, ain't because of no fucking white people, okay? Everybody wasn't truly dark as the time began with. And if you do your research, you'll understand that. Like I said, these are fucking Negroes right here. And this is a Negro as well, okay? This is America, okay? This is why your man Alex Helley plagiarized the story, and this is why they keep making the fucking story, okay? This is what they found. But when, when I show you guys this picture right here of this black man right here, right? You see more people right here. These people got afros. These people ain't got no fucking long, long Indian hair. They got afros. This is a fucking Indian. This is what they equate as a fucking Indian. Say North American warrior Indian. Okay. Now say it's a notice Montana's view warrior Indian chief of North America. So if this is a warrior Indian chief, you don't even see him with long, with long hair. He got a fucking afro. They got afros. They got Afro. You say North American warrior, Indian, 1671. And they got fucking Afro. Stupid motherfuckers. Look, America, it's a black lady. Montex Zuma, a black man. Virginia, more black people. More black people. This is in America, okay? Just to let you know. Oh, let me go back. Hold on. It says this is Flor Flor Florida. So it's saying that this is in Florida. It's saying, it's saying this is in Virginia and this is in Florida. The Florida view would be the tip or whatever. But look, it's showing you this is what people look like in Virginia. And like I said, if you don't know what the hell you look like, then I don't know what the hell to tell you. If you if listen, it's, if it's Nick, all the African Americans look different. Some of us look like we fucking dark Africans. So now understand, yeah, we know some of us was mixed. Some some of us, our ancestors was raped. Some of us integrated with Europeans. But for the ones that basically got more black in them than anybody, look, just take a look at how you look. And then, like I said, you see these people right here. The word American referred to the copper colored people. Okay, so now look. If this is showing you, this is the people he's seen in Virginia. Look, do this look like an Indian to you guys. She got sandals on. 
okay? A bow and arrow, and she has a fucking turban on with feathers in it, okay? Do she look like a fucking slave to you? Please tell me she look like a slave. Please. She don't look like a slave. It's saying America, America. This is what the fucking people look like in America, okay? This is what the people look like in America, okay? Whether you want to say, oh, that's that's not that's not what my people look like. Yes, it is. This is your people right here. You see the, the short haircuts. They got afros. They got afros. You see this? They got afros. So if he take this off, his hair looks just like this. Okay? Let's see. Let me view some more. Show you. Show y'all. And you got people over here that don't even know. Like they calling themselves African American when they know you ain't no fucking African. Look. Look, America, this is a black lady right here. This is a black lady right here. This I don't care what you call it's a black lady, okay? This is another Negro right here. This is another Negro. You see more Negroes right here, okay? You see this. These are your conquistadors that came here. And these are the people that they seen when they came here. Okay, look at this brother. Look at her. Look at him. Look at him. Look, look what he got on his head. Do he look like a fucking slave? No. Okay? Let me see some more. So they change the pictures up as they go along. But as we see, here we go right here. It's one of my favorite pictures. And you motherfuckers know it. Look, it's a Negro. I don't really care what you want to say her hair where it was or whatever she had on. It's a Negro. I suspect these are braids or dreads. She's throwing gold. They go more Negroes, more Negroes behind her. Okay, these are the conquistadors. Okay, more Negroes behind her, and that's why they said that this was a matriarch, not a patriarch. When you hear patriot, that's dealing with man. Okay, like you said, you see her sitting on a fucking alligator. She's sitting on a fucking alligator. Okay, she's sitting on an alligator, my man. What's this about? So there you go. Negroes, Negroes, Negroes. See? And you show people this shit and they sit there and argue you down or whatever. And this is what they telling you the people look like. But they told you what no black people here. White people brought you over here on a fucking boat. Okay? And this is another picture just like the other picture. See this one right here? She's not dressed like no damn slave. And why would she be the emblem of America? Listen, Alex Haley plagiarized Roots because he was a fucking agent. Because he was hired to let you know that you wasn't from this continent. To keep you away from this continent as well. Now, let me see something. I'm going to go to this real quick and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this video. Now, I'm saying, amazing Roots return after 40 years dredging up. Alex Helly scandal. I mean, um, Alex Helly plagiarized scandal. Let's read a little bit of this. Let's see what this is about. Say, for all the glory of accolades and, uh, and accomplishments, and say, Roots is still deeply rooted in controversy. Alex Helly, the author of the celebrated book, said it was based on his own family. But Alex, but it's a but Helly, who died in 1992, was famously accused of plagiarizing parts of the Pulitzer winning Roots. The settlement, this the settle was a very public public lawsuit brought against him by by another writer. All right, so say Harold Harold Corlander, which we already know, we already read through this right here. They say who was white. They say wrote a novel called The African. Let me skip through this. They say where there was major major different um, differences between the two books, Caroline, I mean Coralanda, and several expert witnesses testified that Halley had had used the African source uh, um, material from his book in '76, the book and the 1977 TV miniseries. Let me see something. That's what he's telling you about this. But look, this is what I wanted to say. This is, look, it's saying, look, basically, it's saying amazing roots return after 40 years dredging up Alex Helvey. So, look, this is the new, this is the new miniseries that just came out last year, right? So, this is the thing, right? 
Once you plagiarize something and you get sued for it, you can't use that material again. So bear with me, my people, okay? Once you plagiarize something, okay, you cannot use that material if they sued Alex Helley in court and said that parts of his book was used from the book, the um, Africans, then Alex Helley cannot use, he can't even use the book because it's been plagiarized. So the book should be off the fucking shelves. So why would they allow a remake to come out? Hmm? Why would they allow a remake to come out? So let's look and see some of the the usual suspects. <coughs> Forrest Whitaker. I don't know who this is. Mar Mario Van Peebles. You already know what that's about. Forrest Whitaker. Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> you already know what he about. I want to see one. Look. Derek Luke. Mikel Pfeiffer. This guy right here. Will Packer this guy okay I ain't saying too much about this guy but he's the executive producer who came out with this shit you know what I'm saying and you see the movies he made like he's another like he's a fucking um a what's the name on the low see people bigging up this movie roots but they don't know that your roots is in this country and the Americas that 90 percent of us is who taught my we African Americans it are American and they know this shit. But they want to keep making these movies to put your ass back in furs and limbo. Because the more and more you disconnect yourself to the land, the more and more that you push yourself. Because they're not going to honor slavery. Because they know that there was white slaves in this country. They know that the majority of slaves in this country was fucking white. And you stupid motherfuckers don't even know that. Okay? You don't even know that the majority of the fucking people in this country was white slaves. That's why after the Civil War, they was able to get your ass. And you don't even understand that. Because if they was already winning, then, like, it's, just think about the story. Think about the slave trade or whatever. Think about all the stories that they're telling you and do your own research on it. And like I said, you look up things like Arnolis Montanus. This person is not supposed to be in this country or whatever. According to what he said, he said an emblem of America. Why would she be a fucking emblem of America. And you telling me that there's not African Americans that look like this lady? This is what you truly telling me? There's not African Americans who look like her. Let me see something. There's not African Americans who look like this motherfucker, a Mohawk Indian? Look, there's not African Americans who look like him? See, and it's, it's, it's so fucked up that we gotta sit here and find our people through images. We don't have no definite, because all of the remnants that the Smithsonian come over here and find, they hide. And they, they don't want you to, they hide the shit. They dig up all this shit and they hide it. Okay? Look, my tech zoomer, it's a Negro. It's a fucking Negro. You wanna tell me this is a fucking Indian? You're a damn fool. Look, he got the same feathers on, same feather skirt on as the fucking slaves. Look, as this guy. You see this guy? He got the same thing on as this guy. This guy is the king of Mexico. Okay? But yeah, he got the same shit on this guy got on. So how would the people in America wearing the same thing that the people in Africa was wearing? It's a fucking lie. It's a fucking lie. They lying to us. That's why. Okay? Montex Zuma. Slave poster, slave poster, Negroes, not telling you where they got your ass from, but the, but he got that same feather crown on and the same grass skirt as the king of Mexico, okay, as well as other people that you see, these other images that you see all throughout, all this, he got it here, that's my tech Zuma right there as well. He's telling you the first Africans, the first Americans was Africans or whatever, but they not they wasn't Africans. Be the person who wrote this book think that they was called Africans. They weren't even called that. Like I said, numerous different research. Do your research, people, all right? You know, you, you people, you you come and you you don't you don't you don't believe you don't you think that we trying to steal Indian culture. We're not Indians, okay? This is what they refer to the people as. Let's see. Bear with me. Look. It says it's right here. 
It's a Native of America, right? Boom. It's not saying Native of America. It's not saying Native American. It's saying Native of America. Semicolon. This is when it start originally applied to the Aborigines or copper color races found here by Europeans. Okay, let's cut it right there. Semicolon. Follow through. But now apply to descendants of Europeans. See, these people then stole your shit. They stole your shit. How do this apply to Europeans? born in america now i saying everybody born here now i saying everybody born here is an american but yet the americans which are the aborigines or copper color race let's see what the copper color look like this is what copper color look like see i'm showing you it's what copper color look like this motherfucker is pink it's not no red man okay this is what they said the people look like look Look, this is a black man. If people ever wake the fuck up and understand that, you take a look. See this brother right here? He look just like him. See his nose? See his nose? See? He look just like him, okay? This is what a real penny looks like, you people. Let's see some more. I'm showing you images like this. Like you thinking because this man got long hair that he's not a Negro. But how do Negro, as a matter of fact, look at his shit at the bottom. It's dreaded up. And if you put if you put bear fat or you put some type of oil in the African-American hair, his hair would be straight. His hair would not be the same way it is. Different images, more Negroes that was found here. You know, this guy, this guy right here, he looks just like a fucking African. You understand? Look, man, this shit goes on. I'm not even going to keep wasting.